The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey Native Fruit. Every single week, Age of Fruit and DigiKey team up, and Lady Ada uses her knowledge of searching the DigiKey site to find the parts you need. Lady Ada, what is this week's Great Search? Okay, so we actually just talked about using the same board layout with parts that have the same uh, pinout. So BMP280 and DPS310. I've talked about the VL. Uh, 53L0X from ST, and there's the uh, 53L1X or 1CX. So again, you know, sometimes companies will reuse or or competing companies will use the same pinout and package, um, which is like really awesome because again, you don't have to respin a board, you don't have to respin a tester, you can recycle um, the same layout. So this week, um, I was tasked with, uh, and you'll see why this is, you know, in, in thematic. Um, we just ran out of ADXL 377s. This, this is a really cool chip. Analog Device, of course, is, is one of the first companies to make um, you know, analog and digital accelerometers. Um, they're famous for it. Um, this is a 200G accelerometer. Now, most people don't use 200G accelerometers. They use uh, you know, 2, 4, 8, maybe 16. 32G is kind of a high end uh, you know, for, for like you know, um, sports and um, some automotive. But there are, you know, rocketry and um, mechatronic and robotic reasons that you'll want up to 100 or 200 G output. Um, this accelerometer, it's funny. I think this actually uses the same pinout as um, the ADXL 326. I think this one, maybe it's not, but it's very similar. They have a lot of a uh, of LG, it's 16 LGA. Um, sensors and uh yeah you know, i really like this one because it was a, a 200g analog output and i was like well i'd like to see if i could find a replacement um analog is kind of nice it's ratio metric which means that in whatever the v sorry within the 3.3 volt output it's um you can use that three volt output into your analog reference for your microcontroller and then exactly halfway is zero g and then you know as it all the way to 3.3 volts is plus 200 G, all the way down to ground is um, negative 200 G. So um, one thing that's interesting is, you know, uh, one reason that you will have, um, I, I like to, you know, when, when a sensor becomes obsolete, so this just became obsolete, it's no longer manufactured, I sometimes like to look at the um, obsolescence, obsolescence document. Um, so, uh, this is interesting. So, you know, it, there is a last time by date, which just passed, but I'll say that again, with, with the silicon shortages, these last time dates, these, you know, they're what they mean and what, you know, it's whether you can actually get them is different. It used to, you used to have a little bit of time. You used to be able to get the parts. And now I'm finding that when it's gone, it's really, it's, it's gone, gone, um, that end of line time. So, um, I think we have a couple more in order, but I did want to find a replacement. With what I thought was interesting was that this ASIC process is being discontinued by the foundry. Um, I have seen this happen, um, and and when this happens, it, you're really—I mean, there's especially like interesting analog process chips. Um, I'll see that the the they're discontinued, and it's not like oh, you know, they're not popular. It's like no, that process that, that there's not enough companies using that process. The uh, wafer foundry, the, the company that makes the silicon is actually going to shut down that line and they're going to replace it with a more profitable line. This, this happens and when it happens, you are totally SOL. I remember, I think there's a couple Maxim chips. I think the, a couple of the analog chips that I got from Maxim, I remember, were also shut down for similar reasons. Um, so that said, um, you know, I was like, at first I was thinking, okay, well, let's find, you know, analog XYZ. Uh, you know, um, chips. Um, I didn't select plus or minus 200G because, you know, maybe there's 100G available. Um, and, of course, I want surface mount. So let's see. And then let's look also, of course, only at active. So you know the analog ones. And you'll see, you know, some of these are, are the, you know, old mill spec ones. These are, some of them are quite ancient. Um, the, the, three, the 335 series we've been carrying for quite a while. Um, but I thought maybe let's look at, uh, you know, the high G rate. So maybe, you know, 50 to 500 G. 
And unfortunately, um, the, you know, they do exist, but they're all like super expensive. They're like about a hundred dollars a piece and they're available only from TE. So these are very specialty parts. This is kind of where I sort of have to make a decision. Look, you know, this analog, um, I'm not going to get an analog version of this accelerometer, but maybe I can get a digital version. You know, maybe I have to give up on that. I do like the analog ones. I think they're really cool. Um, but I also know uh, when to give up. So um, going back here, we're just going to go to accelerometers. I only want active ones because I don't want to go through this whole process again so quickly. And then I want X, Y, and Z. I really only want triple axis uh, accelerometers. It's, they're very common these days. Um, and then acceleration range, you know, I do, I want to see maybe, you know, 50 to 500. 6,000 G is kind of bonkers. I'm not really ready for that. So let's do 50 to 500. And, um, you'll see that, you know, there are a couple really expensive, you know, industrial use ones, but there are also a couple of inexpensive ones as well. Um, looking at uh looking at price there's these the list series i'll say you can't get any accelerometers from st for the next year so i've got to, i'm going to skip that one um the list 200 i think we stock this one but this was kind of interesting again i really like analog devices for their accelerometers um so this 200g accelerometer first off they have a lot in stock which is really nice another thing that is cool is that they are um they have this package the 14 LGA and the 14 LGA uh, uh, pinout is shared with almost all their other accelerometers which is why I was talking about shared pinout so this this is the um, the pinout for the accelerometer you can see it's you know not all the pins are used or some reserved but it does have two interrupt pins uh, SPI port and I squared C shared, which I really I like it when sensors are like, look, we can do I squared C or SPI, because I feel like they really, you know, I squared C is tough to bit bang, but SPI is quite easy. SPI is also faster if you really want to get the data out much quicker. Um, of course, you can have multiple sensors on SPI, so I'm, I'm really like, I'm always in love when um, sensor companies uh, have I squared C and SPI dual purpose um, interfaces. But um, thankfully, you know, this LGA, when I saw this, I was like, ooh, I wonder, you know, hopefully, is that going to be the same as the, um, the other LGA accelerometers, the, I'm sorry, ADXL 345, which is ancient and uh, historic, right, this one, and also um, the um, 343, which is kind of like the next gen of the... Um, the uh, 345 and uh, you know we, we featured this on the uh, Neo Trellis in one of the Ada boxes so it's a very nice very low cost accelerometer and again analog devices they do a really really good job with their accelerometers they're not the cheapest but they're like really reliable very quiet and um, you get really good performance out of them so thankfully um, this board the 345 which is the same pinout as the 343 is um, you see, I also did a feather wing of this, uh, this board. Um, these are the same pinout. And so uh, the 375, I was like, oh, you know, this is an easy. You know, normally I wouldn't spin up a whole new board for this accelerometer. But if I can reuse that same design um, to all three of them, I'm, I'm, I'm loving that because I, I really like to have one design. So I did. Let's see. It's going to be recent. So for the ADXL, and the ADXL 343, it's actually one of the last boards that we did before we changed over to some of our standard STEM QT format. So I was like, you know what? Let's make a breakout for this board, and while I'm at it, revise the 345 and the 343. Um, so this is what I came up with. It's, it's a little bit of a tight fit, but it does fit. Um, let's do top silk. So um, the accelerometer's in the center. We've got four big mounting holes. I squared C down here, and then the extra SPI pins up here, and then everything everything fits. And there's like a little bit of room for the, the part number. And then, of course, on the back, I can have um, even more part number info. But uh, and maybe I'll, you know, over here in the corner, I can maybe fit an XY coordinate uh, marking. But um, yes, it's the design I made, and that's the accelerometer I picked. 
I wish there was an analog uh, 200G accelerometer, but I think I think the days of analog output accelerometers is kind of over. But you know, I squared C SPI is available, and I think not only is this chip going to be pin compatible, but it's likely going to be very close software wise as well. I'll probably be able to reuse the uh, Python and Arduino drivers that we've written for the 3XX series for the 200G accelerometer. So uh, I'm going to pick some of those up and uh, spin out this board, and I'll mount it on, and it'll just work. That's, That's a great, great search. search.